nanohub.org. You can follow along with this presentation using printed slides from the NanoHub. Visit www.nanohub.org and download the PDF file containing the slides for this presentation. Print them out and turn each page when you hear the following sound. Enjoy the show. So in this presentation I would like to show you results obtained with Omen on full band and atomistic simulations in a realistic 40 nanometer indium arsenide hemp. This work was actually presented at IEDM in 2008, so it's a pretty much a conference presentation. The motivation for this work is that uh, we want to improve device performance to higher speed and lower power consumption, and we are faced with quite some challenges that that may be hard to do with silicon MOSFETs. So people are actively exploring 3.5 devices. Um, Intel is doing that with uh, uh, some of their devices, and also Freescale is starting to look at 3.5 devices. The challenges are that we don't have really good oxide layers, high K uh, layers, and we don't have really good uh, P-dope transistors in the 3.5s. And if we want to have a complementary logic, we need to overcome that uh, challenge. So at MIT, people have begun to build uh, indium arsenide based hemp devices. And they've published that in subsequent IEDM papers in 05, 110 nanometer, 60 nanometer, and a 40 nanometer device which look reasonably promising in their overall device behavior. And it seems like they were able to shorten the gate length every year. So that was the motivation why we might want to model these devices. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, band structure and transport and multi-scale scale domain decomposition and then a performance analysis and then uh, challenges and open issues. So the simulation approach is that we use the Omen code that is uh, uh, here based on a nearest neighbor SP3S star D5 uh, type binding methodology. That means th the whole band structure is completely represented, a full baryon zone. So here shown is indium arsenide. It includes all the non-parabolic effects. It includes proper valence bands. It includes strain dependence, and we can do alloy disorder and uh, um, deformations. We can extend this to nanostructures. We've done this for nanostructures, and it's really an atomistic de uh, description. The bad part is it's pretty intensive to compute this. It's high computational effort. Also, it's a semi-empirical semi method. We don't have a direct link to ab initio calculations for these tight binding parameters. The structure we want to look at and, um, is basically a one-dimensional structure. We want to look at transport in one direction. We have injection from one end. We can compute reflection and transmission. In this study here, we do not include scattering. So you can do this in a plane wave function approach, where you inject waves from the left and catch them on the right. We do this in a wave function approach where we just need to solve linear systems of equations rather than doing partial matrix inversions to do a full NEGF calculation. The Hamiltonian is spatially represented in a tight binding description where each hopping matrix element from one side to the next uh, is represented and we compute wave functions in the system. So we need to solve a linear system of equation AX equal B the size A is the number of atoms times the number of orbitals per atoms. We have about a thousand energies that we need to compute, about 15 to 13 momenta. And we use a parallel approach and we do it uh, to solve that problem. We have a 2D domain that is roughly limited to 15 by 200 nanometers. And then therefore we need to have a multi-scale decomposition scheme. So what you have here 
is a device that is actually very long. It's quite long, 440 nanometers long. That is longer than we can do transport in. But we know strain is long range. And we have a device that is consisting of indium aluminum arsenide, um, indium gallium arsenide, indium arsenide, indium gallium arsenide, indium aluminum arsenide. We know that system is strained. And we know strain is long range. So we need to compute the strain, and we do that in NEMO, where we have a 1.4 million atom uh, valence force field calculation to compute that strain. Once we know where the atoms are and how they're strained, we can do an electrostatic calculation, a Poisson domain with floating boundary conditions, where we take a subsection of this device. And that subsection is now small enough that we can do uh, electrostatics 